Welcome to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. The following stories are accounts that I've collected from people who live on the Woodrow housing estate in Redditch. If you haven't heard the podcast episode that I covered on the Woodrow Poltergeist, I recommend listening as it will give an insight on the history of the area and previous paranormal activity. This first account is from Rushock Close. As a child, I lived on Rushock Close, and we always had strange things going on in the house. I had what my family called an invisible friend, but I knew she was real. We used to play together all of the time. My family never believed that my friend was real until one day, when she was seen in the hallway by my mum. My dad said that we were all mad until he got us up for work one morning and saw her for himself. He was terrified. We would often hear footsteps walking across the landing which always stopped at the bathroom but we would never see anyone. Objects would move around the house move to places where they weren't before and on occasion, the TV would turn on and off. We just got used to it. Next to Rushock Close is Ombersley Close. In this next account, the tenant of the house is still experiencing the activity. It started in the first month of living in the house. I kept getting a feeling that someone or something was watching us all of the time. And then one night, I heard a bang come from the kitchen. So I went downstairs to see what it was. It was 2.30 in the morning, so I hadn't had much sleep. As I went to walk into the kitchen, the light suddenly came on. I thought that I might have not pushed down the switch properly, so I looked around to see what the bang was. I couldn't see anything out of place, so I just went off to bed. The next night, it happened again. At 2.30, there was a bang from the kitchen, and the light came on. This time, it freaked me out. I went back to bed, but I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I woke my son up for school, and went downstairs to prepare his breakfast and school lunch when I noticed that a photo of my mum and myself was lying face down. I picked it up and carried on with my day. I took my son to school and when I got home, I could hear my dog barking. I walked into the house and he was in the hallway, barking towards the kitchen. I thought that someone had broken in and the dog was barking at them. But when I looked, There was no one there. But the drawers and the doors of the kitchen cupboards were all open. I checked the house to see if anything was missing. But everything was in its place. Something was in the house, but I just had to try and ignore it. I kept experiencing the exact same thing day in, day out. I even set up a camera one night and I recorded the kitchen light going on. After three minutes, it goes off. My young son started telling me that there was a man coming into his bedroom and talking to him. I've never had a medium out or any paranormal investigators. I've just got used to it. The next story is from someone who rented a room in a house on Ombersley Close for 10 months towards the start of winter in 1999 until summer 2000. I shared the house with two girls whose bedroom was opposite mine. They would often ask if I was crying at night 
To which I replied, I wasn't. They said that they often heard a little girl crying at night. On Christmas morning in 1999, I was up early to get ready to spend the day with my friend and her family. The other girls in the house had gone away for Christmas, so I was alone in the house. I went into the kitchen to do the dishes before leaving, so that the house was nice and clean on my return. The kitchen window above the kitchen sink had the blind up and it was still dark outside. All I could see was the darkness through the half neck curtain. There was a window directly behind me on the opposite side of the kitchen. I started doing the dishes, looking down into the sink, and something caught my eye in the window. I looked directly up, and in the window was a little girl in a white dress, as clear as day. I dropped a glass in the sink, cut my finger as it smashed. I felt stone cold. Within seconds, I looked directly at the window behind me, and then looked back, and the little girl was gone. I immediately ran out of the house to look, but there was nothing. She had gone. I sharply left the house for the Christmas celebrations at my friend's parents' house, feeling very uneasy. The house had a little cross on the wall, just on the right-hand side of the hallway as you entered. Apparently, it had been exercised, but that was only hearsay. So I do not know how true that was. The next story is from Cropthorne Close. I've lived in this house for years, and we are still experiencing a lot of activity. We've seen grey and black shadows walking around the house. They are human in shape. Things move about a lot. Cups, plates and other objects. One night, a solid wooden wardrobe was knocked over in my bedroom. It's way too heavy for it just to fall. It would take some serious force for it to be pushed over. The one thing we hear most is a child giggling. We can hear her on a daily basis, and it still sends a chill down my spine. But it also makes me feel sad. Another ghost familiar to many people in the area is that of a small old lady. She has been seen many times by many people. She is known to walk along the footpath in Longdon Close, near to the back of Woodrow Primary School. Many of the houses in Woodrow have experienced a lot of paranormal activity. They all seem to have similar experiences. Footsteps, walking around the houses, things moving about, and the sighting of a little girl wearing a white dress. A girl with the same description has been seen many times in the nearby Wire Hill Woods. Thank you for listening to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. If you've had a paranormal experience and would like me to cover it, please contact me on the website www ghosttales.co.uk or on the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash ghosttalespodcast or on Instagram at ghosttalespodcasts